I seek your good. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's seek the good of Israel. Amen. Let's seek the good of the church. Because there's a promise. There's an instruction with a promise. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Oh, may we prosper because of the love of Jerusalem. Amen. That's the time to proclaim peace within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. Because it's a critical time. But beyond that, Jews themselves note that this is a season that they actually wait on the Lord at that time. They wait on the Lord for three weeks. Three weeks of fasting. That's the Jews themselves. Three weeks of uh, fasting. Three weeks of mourning. It usually starts on the 17th of Tammuz. And it moves to the ninth of Ab. Ab is the fifth month. So three weeks of, uh, of mourning, of fasting, that begins from the 17th of Tammuz. Who knows why it begins on the 17th of Tammuz? Why does it begin on the 17th of Tammuz? That's the day the golden calf was uh, worshipped. The other things that happened at that time, I'll show you as I conclude, the events of the 17th. So we too, we may not join, may not pray for that land, but you take note of that gate because three weeks from 17 to the 9th of Ab, the 9th of Ab is called Tisha B'Av, but don't go into the details of uh, the nomenclatures. But three weeks, that's the time they pray and repent because they move from a time of revelation to a time of judgment. Revelation in the month of Sivan, when God gave them an identity, gave them the 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 the, the law, gave them the five books of Moses, then they enter into a time of judgment. Tammuz is the season when, in fact, this is the beautiful part of Tammuz. I've been saying, don't only pray indoors, pray outdoors. This is the reason now. Tammuz is the season when everything God created. Everything God created is mandated to protect, to preserve, and to promote whatever is precious in God's sight. Everything God created is mandated to protect, to preserve, and to promote whatever is precious in God's sight. You are precious in God's sight. In the season of Tammuz, the waters will protect you. Amen. Even the lions and the tigers will protect you. Amen. Ah, everything God created, including demonic spirits, will protect you. Amen. And your amen is not very strong. Amen. You know, I said this somebody said, How can I? I said, Well, this is the word of the Lord concerning the season. Of Tammuz. I just showed you Jeremiah 39. Please go back to Jeremiah 39. Go back. Go back to Jeremiah 39. You saw that Nebuchadnezzar penetrated the city of Jerusalem on the ninth day of the fourth month. That's the time he entered. When he entered, what did he do? Then all the princes of Babylon came in and sat at the middle gate. He took the princes, he killed them. Verse 4 says, So it was when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and all the men of war saw them, that they fled. So the men of war of, of, of Israel fled in the fourth month. We will not flee in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the man, the book that caught Zedekiah, plucked out his two eyes, took his princes, his children, killed them. Then there's something I noticed. Because they were wicked people. They were the ones that threw Jeremiah into prison. They were the ones that established Baal worship to the point that Jehovah was no longer recognized. So, they were not precious in God's eyes because they were wicked people. But there was one man that was precious in God's eyes who had challenged the worship of Baal. Who had prayed that they should not worship Baal. In fact, he prophesied that the days are coming Nebuchadnezzar will penetrate the city. For which reason they took him 
and put him inside prison. They even wanted to kill him. It took an African called Ebedmelech to preserve him. Amen. They threw him inside the dungeon and they wanted him to die. It was the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, there are two Ethiopian eunuchs. There's the Ethiopian eunuch of the New Testament, but there's the Ethiopian eunuch of the Old Testament. Ebedmelech is the Ethiopian eunuch of the Old Testament. He was one that received the courage. He walked up to Zedekiah and said, this thing you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. This man will die and God will hold you responsible. Mm -hmm. Then Zedekiah the king said, you know, it is the princes that forced me. So please, arrange and go and take him uh, out. But don't tell them that I told you. So Je Jeremiah, no, sorry, um, Ebedmelech, the Ethiopian, tied rags, threw them inside the dungeon and pulled Jeremiah out. Mm. But before this was happening, the Bible tells us that Jeremiah had prophesied, in fact, the longest prophecy concerning Babylon was given by Jeremiah. True or false? And the prophecy Jeremiah gave concerning concerning Babylon was horrible. In fact, it was such a horrible prophecy that if you were Nebuchadnezzar and you came into the city, who should you be looking for after your Kaji king? Who should you look for? I'm asking the question, who should you look for? Jeremiah. You should look for Jeremiah. But what did he do? What did he do? Remember, I just gave a doctrinal word concerning the month of Tammuz. That in the month of Tammuz, everything God created is mandated to protect, to promote, and to preserve whatever is precious. Hello? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. That's why you must interact with creation. You must compare creation to worship the Lord. Because everything God created is mandated to protect, to preserve, and to promote whatever is precious. Can somebody who is precious yes, shout, I am precious? I am precious! <laughs> creation will protect you. Amen. Creation will preserve you. Amen. Creation will lay the foundation for your promotion. Amen. So, we're in agreement that this man called Jeremiah, after Nebuchadnezzar must have caught the king and the princes, he should be the next person he should come because he gave the longest prophecy against Babylon. Mm. In fact, Jeremiah did something in the, in the fourth year of Zedekiah's reign. Zedekiah was going on a diplomatic mission in the fourth year of his reign. It was in the 11th year that Nebuchadnezzar entered Jerusalem. But in the fourth year, so Jeremiah wrote a whole book of prophecy and gave it to the quartermaster, Sereah. I said, when you get to Babylon, because you are on a diplomatic mission, they can't arrest you. You came with the king, so they can't arrest you. So in the full view of everybody, take this book of prophecy and read it to the people. After you finish reading the book of prophecy, tie a stone to the book of prophecy. Go and drop it in the, uh, in the river Euphrates and make a proclamation. So shall Babylon sink and never come up again. They didn't arrest the man because it was on a, it was on a diplomatic mission. Let me show you. Let me not just stay. Speak. Jeremiah 51, let's read from verse Jeremiah 51. Let's just read from verse 59. Jeremiah 51, reading from verse 59. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Seria, the son of Neria, the son of Mashiach, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, to Babylon in the fourth year. In which year? What is the principle about four? Mm. Huh? Mm. If the, in the fourth month everything God created is mandated to protect, to 
prisoner and to promote. You can see why they didn't arrest him. The other reason was because it was in the fourth year of the king's reign. Now, let's continue to read. But take note of that fourth year of his reign. Verse 60. So Jeremiah wrote a book of the evil that will come to Babylon. All the words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Syria, when you arrive in Babylon and see it and read all these words, then you shall say, O oh Lord, you have spoken against this place to cut it off, so that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but it shall be desolate forever. Now it shall be when you have finished reading this book, that you shall tie a stone to it and throw it out into the Euphrates. Then you shall say, Thus shall Babylon sink and not rise from the catastrophe that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Wait a minute. Then in the eleventh year, <laughs> the book has now comes. If I were the book, I would not even look for the king. I would look for Jeremiah. He's the first I will arrest. But what did he do? If the word I have spoken is true, that in the fourth month, everything God created is mandated to protect, to preserve, and promote whatever is precious in God's hand. That means that word must be proven in the light of the relationship between Nebuchadnezzar and Jeremiah in the fourth month, true or false? Okay. So go back to Jeremiah 39. You have seen that verse 2 talks of the fourth month. Look at verse 11 and verse 12. Now we're going to read it together. So open it. I want you to read it for yourself. Jeremiah 39. Permit me to read verse 11. Then we all will read verse 12. Jeremiah 39 verse 11 says, Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge, gave instruction, gave commandment concerning Jeremiah to Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, saying, Everybody, verse 12, want to go? Take him, look after him, and do him no harm, but do to him just as he says to you. Amen. Take him out of prison. Do him no, uh, look after him. Do him no harm. But do to him whatever he tells you to do. How many words were spoken in that first month? How many words were spoken? Take him. That take him is take him out of prison. It means that for them, if anybody is in prison in the fourth month, even your enemy will take you out of prison. Yes. Amen. Take him out of prison. Look after him. Do him no harm. But do to him whatever he says to you. Amen. So this word is true. That in the fourth month, everything God created is mandated to protect whatever is precious. So from, from, from Ezekiel chapter 1 and Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 2, verse 11 and 12, Notice that there are a few things you note about the agenda of the fourth month. It's a season of open heavens. It's a season of the vision of God. It's a season of receiving the word of the Lord expressly. It's a season when God's hand will be upon those that are ordained. It's a time of taking people who are precious in God's sight out of praising. It's a time of looking after them, even with the enemies looking after them. It's a time of doing them no harm. Even if harm is supposed to be done to them, somebody created or creation will refuse to do no harm. Amen. Rather, it is whatever you tell creation no. that will happen. Amen. It's whatever you tell your enemies that they will do. To yes. Oh, wait a minute. Mm, hallelujah. <laughs> so it is possible that if Zedekiah had gone to Babylon on that diplomatic mission in the fifth year or in the third year or in the tenth year it is possible that that man who made that prophecy could have been arrested mm -hmm. apart from the fact that he was he had a diplomatic passport 
The environment, the atmosphere said, no, you can't touch this one, even though he's in your country. You see, I, I just wish that we would come to the place where we'll understand this word. I know you're wondering, is it really possible? Yes, it is a reality. It is a reality because Remember, something happened on the 6th of Tammuz. 6th of Tammuz 